Use case number three is cross-hypervisor conversions in disaster recovery. And we have multiple customers. I'm not saying they're in the thousands and every single one of our customers does this, but we do have some very interesting use cases of customers coming to us and saying, we want to migrate from Hyper-V to VMware. You do cross-hypervisor replication. How can you help us? So in this example, we had a savings bank and a construction company. Not the biggest environment, so I'll give you, it's 50 VMs and 75 VMs, and they were dissatisfied with Hyper-V. They started with a small environment. As they got a little bit bigger, they had some challenges. They found out they were the first to have that challenge, as quite often you get in a Hyper-V environment when you Google, has anyone seen this error, and you don't see anything, and you think, OK, now I'm stuck. And they used Zerto to first test the migration, so they protected the VMs between the two infrastructures, and then they use the same software to replicate and protect it thereafter. And one thing I want to show you, and the key question when you're going between the hypervisors, so say we are going from Hyper-V here to ESXi here. And we again put on the VRA. And here we have their VHDXs. And at this point, you're going to say, well, how can Zerto replicate a VHDX to a VMDK? How are you going to do that conversion? How long does it even take to do this migration, considering you've got to convert the data? And this is the beauty of block-level replication in the hypervisor. We're just reading a block and writing a block. From our point of view, when you create the protection group, if this is a VMDK here, we don't care because we're just writing the block in whatever target format that, you, that we specify when you create this protection group, and we're continuously updating it. The only challenge comes from the actual VM configuration settings itself, which we do have to convert and attach to these disks <coughs> when we fail over. And that is where it does get a little bit messy, because it's not a question of what Zerto supports. It's a question of what does your target hypervisor support. So to give you a perfect example here, if you're using an IDE disk and you're going from Hyper-V to VMware, we have to convert that to SCSI. Otherwise, it won't let us create the VMX. If you're using UEFI secure boot in your Hyper-V environment, then we can't support that in a vSphere environment. So it's not going to allow you to convert that VM. It will fail when you do the test failover, and you will see the exact reason why. And this is available to all of our customers. It's in our documentation if you want to go in more deep dive on it. But the beauty of this setup here is that if you want to test this conversion process, we have failover testing. We can bring a copy of the VM online in an isolated port group or network. And you can see, without ever shutting down the VM in production and without ever breaking the replication stream, how your VMs now perform and behave and what processes you need to go through to get them running in the VMware environment. Because the other thing you'll note is that you have to install the VMware tools manually. <clears throat> we do have a, a cheeky little uh, edited MSI of VMware tools that removes the check that says, are you running in VMware? So you can install it in advance. That's not supported by Zerto. But if you want to go and do that, you can. But for everyone else who doesn't want to do that, then that is a post-migration activity where you install the VMware tools. You're going to have to reboot this VM one more time anyway because you've essentially completely changed its motherboard in all of its device settings. But it does allow you to migrate this VM in just a few clicks and in minutes because this replica data is just seconds behind production. You don't have to wait for a conversion process for anything other than the VM settings. And it's exactly the same going Hyper-V to VMware as it is VMware to Hyper-V. Slightly more controversial subject, but we do have customers out there. So we had an energy company over in Europe, a HR service provider in a county government, slightly bigger environments. One was 250 VMs. And they came to us and said, we have a project where we want to move away from paying VMware licensing. Cost is a big driver in these environments. Even if I go back to my own environment back in 2010, even I was being asked then, can we look at Hyper-V? I was like, no, definitely not. And I think you know, as they continue to add more features, and I'll be interested to see you know, the new version of 2016, for many smaller environments out there, 
how long will they be able to continue justifying saying, no, this is what I'm comfortable and happy with, and paying for VMware licensing? So for some customers, they come to us and they say, we want to use Zerto to, again, test, migrate. But importantly, with all of these, the same license that they buy to migrate, the same software, you can then reuse to protect after VMware to VMware, Hyper-V to Hyper-V. So this is actually one of the key benefits of what we sell against, especially the competition, that, yeah, you can go and buy this solution today and it might work fine for your existing VMware environment, but what if you want to switch to a different hypervisor in the future? Yes, today we only support VMware and Hyper-V, but in the future, what if we add more in there, which we'll come back to in the future's discussion? Cloud drive. <laughs> so what I want to do is show you <coughs> a very quick demonstration of this. So if we come back to my interface here. We've got multiple protection groups. And the one of specific interest is we have this protection group that is going from DC1, which is my VMware site, you can see by the logo, going to DC3, which is my Hyper-V site. And to show you what that looks on the back, we can see we have my CRM application VMs, and it is CRM app 2. So it's these three VMs here. So in Zerto, in order to test the migration between the hypervisors, we're going to select the Hyper-V protection group next. Next, start failover test. And I'm cheating in that I have a uh, nested Hyper-V environment in my <laughs> VMware lab. Ah. I'm sorry, but I don't have that many hosts. It's the best way to run Hyper-V. What can we see? <laughs> <laughs> it is the best, best way, way to, to run Hyper-V. I can control it and I can kill it when it dies. <laughs> We've got the VMs already. Yes, it's got to build up the process. It's got to attach the disk and power them on. But that's how simple it is to build a full test of your VMs cross hypervisor. That is the power of software-defined replication and recovery at the block level. It's amazing. This can all be done via REST also, right? Yes. 